The Story of Civil Rights What are civil rights? Civil rights are laws that the government makes to protect its people. These laws make sure people are treated fairly and with respect. One of the best parts of living in a free country is having a civil rights. Your civil rights keep you safe from harm by any person or group. Your civil rights protect you so that you can live your you can live life without fear. The only time a person may lose their civil rights is if they break the law. If they break the law. Imagine how hard it would be to live without civil rights. Education is an important civil right. Without it, not all children would be allowed to go to school. Many slaves were forced to work on big cotton, tobacco, and maize plantations in the American South. Not everyone has always held their civil rights in the United States. African Americans struggled to gain civil rights for many years. In the early 1600s, thousands of people were taken from their homes in Africa and sent to North America, America on ships. Once there, they were sold as slaves. A slave is someone who is owned by another person. Slaves were used as workers. Many of them worked on large farms called plantations. Slaves worked long hours. The people was very hard. Slaves were treated like property instead of people, but they could do nothing about it. They had no civil rights to protect them. There were people in, the Af in America who wanted to stop slavery. They were called abolitionists. Some abolitionists, such as Harry Tubman, helped people to escape slavery in the South. They traveled to the northern states and Canada by a special route known as the Underground Rail Railroad. Tubman, who was a slave herself until she escaped in 1849, guided hundreds of slaves to freedom in this way. Frederick Douglass was another famous abolitionist. As a slave, he learned to read in secret. When he escaped to Massachusetts, USA in 1838, Douglass began using his talents as a writer and speaker to convince people that slavery was wrong. He wrote his first book in 1845. In it, he tells the story of his life. This book has now been re read by people all around the world. Brooker T. Washington was also born a slave. He went on to become a great writer and public speaker. Washington believed that African Americans should be allowed to have an ex education. In 1881, he founded the Tuskegee Institute, a black university in Alabama, USA. Abraham Lincoln was elected president of the United States in 1860. He was an abolitionist. He wanted to end slavery in the USA once and for all. However, other people wanted slavery in the United States to continue. They were not happy that Lincoln was elected. Many of these people lived in the southern United States where they used slaves to work on their farms. A war between the southern states and the northern states began soon after Lincoln became president. This is known as the American Civil War. 
More than 600,000 people would die before the war finally ended. The northern states won the war in 1865 and Lincoln passed a new law. This new law ended all slavery in the United States. It is known as the 13th, 13th Amendment to the Constitution. Even though they were no longer slaves, African Americans were still treated unfairly. They usually found it difficult to get jobs. Sometimes they were not able to buy homes or to eat in restaurants and buy things in shops that are only allowed white customers. If a white person attacked a black person, the white person almost never got in trouble for it. Sometimes the black person would go to jail even if he or she had done nothing wrong. African Americans were still a long way from having their true civil rights in the United States. Separate but equal. Some American states had laws called Jim Crow, laws that allow segre allowed segregation. To segregate means to separate. White lawmakers wanted black people to live separately from the white people. They often used the phrase separate but not equal. But things were really equal, not even close. There were separate public toilets, water fountains, and other facilities for white people and black people. Taking action. African Americans were still not being treated equally at the end of the 1800s. For example, there were sometimes separate train carriages for black people and for white people. In 1892, a black man from Louisiana, USA called Homer Plessy refused to leave a train carriage meant for white people only. He was arrested and found guilty. Plessy and his lawyers believed he had not done anything wrong. They brought his case all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Plessy lost again. The Supreme Court's decision told the rest of the country that segregation or treating people as separate but not but equal was fine. However, there were signs of hope. In 1905, about 30 African American leaders got together to talk about the challenges they faced. This historic meeting led to the creation of the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, in 1909. In 1954, the separate but equal way of thinking started to come to an end. Places that were meant for African Americans, such as schools and restaurants, were not equal to those for whites. Lawyers for the NAACP started lawsuits to allow African American students to go to the same schools as whites. This time, the Supreme Court agreed with them. Unfortunately, many schools still tried to keep out African American students. In 1957, nine black teenagers in Little Rock, Arkansas, USA, weren't allowed to go to, the, to Little Rock Central High School. The president of the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, had to get involved. He ordered the school to let the students in. After that, the civil rights movement became stronger and stronger in the United States. This is when another major African-American figure in the movement showed up. A housekeeper and seamstress from Alabama, USA called Rosa Parks. In December 1955, Parks was sitting on a bus in the town of Montgomery, Montgomery, Alabama. This bus was filled with passengers when a white man got on. She was told to give him her seat. Tired of this unfair treatment, Parks refused. She was arrested. She also lost her job as a seamstress. 
Little did the town of Montgomery Gomery, realize what an awful mistake it had made. After Rosa Parks' arrest, leaders in the African-American community were angry. It was time to take action. They organized the Montgomery bus boycott. A boycott is when people refuse to use the services of a business in the hope of convincing the business to change its behavior. African Americans in the Montgomery area were encouraged to boycott public buses. The boycott lost more than a year, from 5 December in 1955, four days after Park's arrest, until December 20, 1956. Finally, the state's top court made a decision. The bus company's segregation rules were declared illegal. Robbie Bridges in 1960, when she was just six years old, Robbie Bridges took an important test. She did well enough on the test that she was allowed to attend William Friends Elementary School. But the school had always been for white students only. From Robbie's first day, she was treated terribly. Other parents refused to let their children go to school with her. Most teachers refused to teach her, but Robbie was brave. Was brave. Robbie was protected by federal marshals who walk her to school each morning. She refused to cry during her walks to and from the school. Her family also suffered during this time. Her father was fired from his job and some shops refused to serve her parents. Today, Robbie stays busy with civil rights activism. She has received many awards and honors. In 2014, a statue of her was unveiled in the courtyard of the William Friends Elementary School. Marching for Equality One of the most important figures in the civil rights movement was Martin Luther King Jr. His dream of equality inspired millions of people. King was born in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, in 15th of January, in 15th of January, 1929. His family was very poor. As a young boy growing up in the South, he was treated unfairly many times. His family was not allowed to buy things in certain shops or to go to restaurants or public places that were only for whites. From an early age, he knew this was not fair. He wanted to make things right. King earned a university degree in religious studies. In 1954, he became the pastor of a baptism church in Alabama, USA. At the church, King worked hard to improve his skills. He wrote many speeches and proved himself to be a powerful public speaker. These talents would become very useful in the fight for civil rights. On 1 of December 1955, one of the most important days in King's life took place when Rosa Parks was arrested for not giving up her seat on a bus. After King heard about this event, he helped lead the boycott against Montgomery bus system. By the time the boycott was over in December 1956 and the buses were no longer segregated, King had become famous across the country. King and the Montgomery bus boycott inspired others to take action. In 1960, four young African-American students in Greenboro, North Carolina, USA, sat down at the lunch counter in a Woolworths department store because they were in a whites only section no one would serve them still so they came back day after day each day the students came back more people came with them soon there were more sit-ins taking place all over the united states the sit-ins were successful many department stores stopped allowing segregation some African-American leaders took an aggressive approach to the fight for civil rights. One such leader was known as 
Malcolm, Malcolm X. Malcolm Little was born on 19 of May 1925. In the late 1940s, he changed his name to X. The X stands for his original African name, which he did not know. Malcolm, Malcolm X believes that African Americans could depend only on themselves to gain their civil rights. He did not think they could depend on government leaders. Malcolm X encouraged black people to take action against others, even to the point of violence or ne if necessary. Many people dis disagreed with his ideas about using violence. King disagreed with Malcolm X. He believed that violence would make some people feel even more hatred towards African Americans and their cause. Instead, King believed in nonviolence. He advised people to keep their protest peaceful. This included taking part in marches, sit-ins, and boycotts. He also advised giving speeches and writing books and newspaper articles. King often spoke of the power of love. He believed that love was the way to equality. Some people disagreed with the idea of African-American equality, but many people had respect for King. One of the largest protests in the 1960s was a march in Washington, D.C., USA in August 1963. Sorry. About 250,000 people came. They gathered in front of the Lincoln Memorial. Leaders of the civil rights movement gave inspiration, inspiring speech. King's speech had a big effect on the people at the, at the event. The speech also inspired people around the country to read about it later. Together, the people had asked the government for equality. They wanted new laws that would end segregation and discrimination. The march inspired government leaders to begin working on these new laws. But that was later. There was more work, work to do first. I have a dream. Martin Luther King Jr. will always be remembered for his famous I Have a Dream speech. He gave it during the march on Washington in 1963. In this speech, he spoke of the struggles African Americans had faced in the past and the struggles they continued to face. I have a dream that my four Four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. In 19... Time for change. In 1960s, I thought of as the turning point for civil rights in the United States. Many people of all races took part in protests and marches to tell their government that things needed to change. They asked their elected leaders to make laws that would end race, races, racism and discrimination. They wanted African Americans to be treated fairly. The government listened. Two presidents helped to bring about the change people wanted to see. John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. In November 1960, the voters of the United States election John F. Kennedy president, the Kennedy had been raised in a wealthy family. He wanted to ease the struggles of people less fortunate than himself. In March 1961, he created a new law. It required all government workers and people who apply for government jobs to be treated equally, regardless of their race, creed, color, or national origin. Good. In 1963, Kennedy began working on new laws that would protect all Americans from discrimination. However, Kennedy was shot and killed in Dallas, Texas, USA on 22 of November 1963 before he could finish his work, this work. 
Kennedy's Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson became president. He promised to make sure that all of Kennedy's plans would become reality. And they did on June on tooth, the 2nd of July, 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 became law. This act made it illegal to discriminate against any American because of their race, gender, skin, color, religion, or where they were born. The next year, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed. It protects the right of African Americans to vote in government elections. Progress was finally being made. A tragic event happened on the morning of 1st of April 1968. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed while he was on a hotel balcony in Memphis, Tennessee, USA. The man who shot him was James Earl Ray. Ray was an escaped prisoner who had been on the run since 1967. After reports of King's death spread across the nation, angry citizens took to the streets. In many major cities, riots broke out. The National Guard of the Army were called in to try to control the situation. King had spent his life fighting for equal rights for American, African Americans. His words still inspired people today. The fight goes on. The African-American community has come a long way in the fight for equality, but things are far from perfect. For example, African-Americans have a higher rate of graduating from the university in 2017 than ever before, but it is still not as high as the rate for white students. Also, the average income for an African-American family is better than it was in 1963. However, it is still only about two-thirds of the average income for all families in the United States. Fewer African-American families lived in poverty today than it, as high as the rate for white students. Also, the average income for an African-American family is better than it was in 1963. However, it is still only about two-thirds of the average income for all families in the United States. Fewer African-American families lived in poverty today than, than in the 1960s. Clearly, things are getting better, but there is still a lot of work to be done. The 1950s and 1960s were the most dramatic years for the civil rights movement. However, there were notable achievements in the 1970s and 1980s as well. In the 1976, the book Roots was, was published. It is about a man who was brought from Africa to America as a slave. The story then followed his relatives from American history. Both the book and TV ministry miniseries were very successful. They exposed many people to the reality of slavery for the first time. Since 1976, the United States has celebrated Black History Month during February. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan made Martin Luther King Jr. Day a national holiday. It is now held every January on the third Monday of the month. The fight for civil rights continued into the 2000s with modern ways of communicating such as the internet and texting. It is easier than ever for activists to get the word out. All the, all the person has to do is post something online. One big example of online activism is the Black Lives Matter movement. It began in 2012 on the Twitter as the hashtag Black Lives Matter. People were angry about recent events in which they felt black people had been horribly, unfairly, and wrongly treated. 
They posted their thoughts and opinions on the entertainment change. People also took part in march, marches and protests, telling everyone how important equality is. These marches and protests happened not just in the United States, but in other countries too. The civil rights movement inspired some of today's most amazing people. At a time when there were very few good job opportunities for African Americans, especially women, Oprah Winfrey decided on a media career. Today, she runs media in empire and is believed to be the wealthiest African American in the world. Colin Powell was born to an immigrant family in Harlem, New York, USA, in 1937. He went on to become the first African American Secretary of State in 2001. Barack Obama worked hard, attended Harvard University and thus and practiced civil rights law. In 2008, he was elected the first African American president of the United States. The fight for civil rights has been long. It has not been easy, but there are many reasons to be helpful. To be hopeful is that one day all people will be treated equally. The end.